I'm not defend Ongai. They just just cutting some money. They just make fish. All the way back up, all the way back up. And middle field, then, a mobile pump. Um, back up three. Um, back up five. It, um, 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 I'm going to 1995. I'm going to jump. I'm going to nine gram. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to ship it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to pants. I'm going to sell it. 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 The drama continues. He was a quality player from the back. Even when he went to Italy overseas and came back, we still supported, we still love him. So he's our man till today. Siambonga njoo muto fana na nomu makfishi mwenza umutige sibe proud singa ba bugele na ba tani be pola la sisi South Africa. I'm Mark Anthony Fish. I am. Played for many teams in South Africa and when she went overseas. I got into football, I would say, from the age of six. From the age of six, I was playing football at this specific club where we were sitting, Arcadia Shepherds. Um, I grew up as a striker and eventually went on to become a defender. But I grew up in this area. I went to Sunnyside Primary um, where I played football as well. And um, this is a home of football not only for me. But for many, many fantastic footballers that came through this club, Arcadia Shepherds, and uh, we're sitting here doing an interview where I'm reminiscing of when I was younger, when I had less grey hair, of uh, how I became a footballer. And like I said, from the age of six, I was playing um, organised football at this specific club, Arcadia Shepherds. A friend of mine from school uh, introduced me to this, this club, Caledonia, spoke to me about it, said it's a club where you can play organized football um, outside the school and it was just down the road from where I lived. So um, I said to him, no, I'll come down here and it stayed, as I said, from the age of six. I came playing here, kicking the ball around. Um, obviously it goes in two, so it's under eight, under ten, the next minute under twelve. And I was very fortunate that the, the age of twelve, I was actually, which coincidentally will uh, work out, I would realize the dream of playing for the national team. At the age of under twelve, I had a coach by the name of Steve Crowley. He was coaching me and Steve Crowley was playing well, we ended up playing for Bafana Bafana and we ended up playing the same team together. So he coached me at under 12 here at Arcadia um, and there's fantastic players. I mean, I, I was, I'm fortunate that you're focusing on me, but you know, the late Thomas Manachachi, there's um, um, Phil Evans, Michael Rogers, there's some fantastic players that come through here. I grew up in this in this area. I grew up not only playing here at Arcadia, Arcadia Shepherds, but also playing in the streets and playing on the in the parks, football. And this is this is a home for me. I mean, as I said, um, what led me to play football was playing school football, um, and this just became an add-on from playing school soccer to playing club soccer. This is Arcadia Shepherds, it's a football club, and um, I was really involved from a, from a young age playing organised football. Um, and that's, I think, where how I was fortunate to carry on and go to, the, to where I got to, playing football. I grew up playing uh, as a striker and everyone wants to play a striker and score goals. Um, so when I got to the grade 10, which you call now, I started 8 when I was growing up, grade 10, I was playing first team cricket at a school called Pretoria Boys High. And I had the choice between cricket and soccer. And I just thought back of when I used to play football, yeah, and in the stands, there were so many beautiful women watching me play. And when I used to score a goal, they all used to cheer for me. So there's no philosophical answer. I played football because there were better looking women watching football than it was cricket.
And that's true. I was asked that all over the world, South Not this is a fact. Asked all over the world where and why I chose football because, man, as a striker, if they used to kick me and get injured, the girls used to jump up, go, oh, they used to cry. I used to love that. Uh, but the attention I got from the women was, uh, was, uh, it was, uh, it was the, the, the deal breaker to be to carry on in football. Uh, La Nsebenza is a secret kiteka la Akadia Chepat, or Macfish or Mazuquami, the we player in Tegaku Lu and Ajadabu center back, or Macfish, Wakubega, Nesoka football yak and Laogi to Akadia Chepat, Wasuga or Macfish, Wayabucho Mokosmos. So being organized and coming here to this club um, plays, played a big part of my background of going to reaching my dream to going overseas to play football. Um, this is where Joe Masono came to watch me play. Um, at the age of 17, he came to watch me play. He wanted to sign me for Cosmos. I only signed the year after. Um, Roy Matthews, I was playing with Roy Matthews' son. Roy Matthews was joint coach with, with Joma. Cosmo, with Joma. Um, so Joma came down to watch me play. And this is where my dream of becoming a, um, a professional footballer started because I was playing amateur football from the age of six to the age of 17 at this one specific club. I never moved, I stayed at this club and uh, it's got fond memories. A lot of the players that I played with are the ones that helped me get, reach my dream because I played with some really talented players. My transition from, uh, from Arcadia Shepherds to Cosmos was uh, a simple one in the sense that I was obviously stepping up a higher level of football, kind of go play with some really fantastic players. Um, I had to just come here. Um, the stepping up of the the mountain training wasn't wasn't much difference because I was going from where I was training twice th twice a week to Cosmos, who was semi-professional. We were only training twice a week there as well. But we all used to come and meet you at the Caledonian, travel together. Uh, there was three, four of us traveled together. Me, Thomas Monachaki, George Platts used to travel together to to get to training. So the the step up wasn't. From a physical point of view, it wasn't such a big step up, but from, a, from, a, from playing with better players and playing, certainly getting better coaching and more insight into the game, definitely was a, it was a fantastic step and a step that I, need to, I needed to make at that age because if I had stayed back, I certainly wouldn't have progressed. So some of the, the, the highlights of and memories that I have of playing in Cosmos were definitely um, traveling in the back of the, 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 the bucky to the training ground, you know, the, what we spoke about uh, as individuals, what was happening in South Africa, um, traveling into Africa without Joma. He never traveled with us into Africa that, that year, so we learned a lot as individuals. And then obviously had a, um, a disappointment. It was the first real disappointment of my football career where we got relegated in 1993. But um, I learned a lot and having the chance and opportunity to play for Joma. But I suppose my first big, real big experience was uh, experience Muti. Um, obviously went to uh, Joma and next minute me as a young guy coming from Arcadia Shepherds had to put my boots out in the, in the middle of the change room and where then as a, as a semi-pro um, you used to polish your own boots and you have to clean your, look after your own boots and to put my clean boots there in the middle of the change room and have water thrown all over I wasn't too happy about that but that was my first experience of Muti. One of the favorite memories was scoring my first goal for Joma. I understand Joma signed me as a replacement for Phil Masinga. Phil Masinga had moved to Sundowns. Um, obviously, I couldn't never refill his boots because Phil was a fantastic stri striker. But I do remember, and I can't remember the team though, but the, the biggest memory of my football career would have to be the semi-final of the Bob Save. Uh, wherever we were playing at the Rand Stadium, uh, Freddie Banda, our central defender, got sent off. And that's when my whole football career changed. I went from a striker to a defender, and uh, Jamie put me at the back and stayed at the back ever since for the rest of my football career. So I can't remember who we played against, but um, Jomo took that decision in that game where we were 1-0 up and needed me to stay at the back and uh, defend that 1-0 lead so we can get to the Bob State final. And that's what he did. So that was probably the biggest memory of, of my Jomo Cosmos career. From um, all the experiences and all the highlights of my, my um, Cosmos career, I had the opportunity to, to move to Orlando Pirates. Um, at the time, you know, Cosmos, we got relegated. 
uh, big disappointment, first disappointment in my footballing career. And uh, found myself where I had two or three other teams that were interested in me to go there. Unfortunately, it never materialized. And um, next minute I found myself um, beginning of the season, 94 season, signing, playing for Orlando Pirates with five of my other, five of my teammates from Cosmos, which was good. Made the, the transition playing for Pirates a lot easier. But uh, found where, where playing for Cosmos, um, relatively supported team by all, everyone. I think if you're a Chiefs fan and a, and a Sundowns fan, you, everyone liked Cosmos because of Jomo probably, where you're now playing for a big team, Orlando Pirates, you see the Orlando Pirates or Kaiser Chiefs. So it was a big, massive step up from a, from a fan point of view, uh, from the expectations of the, of the, of the club. And uh, I found myself stepping into, the, in, what do you want to say, big time football. My experience of playing with some of my teammates, as I said, very important to remember very important to understand that the disappointment that I had from 93 getting relegated, a lot of those players went with me to Pirates. And, you know, it makes you, uh, makes you look back and understand why we went from 93 being relegated to 94, winning the, the, the what is, was then the, the PSL, I think, just PSL league. Um, we won the league um, with some fa fantastic players. And most of them came with me. The Helen McAlelly in Midnight Express, fantastic player. We played a 3 5 2 formation in Cosmos, um, so he could run up and down all day long. The Tony Katana, which not many people remember, he played for Cosmos as well. He went there with us. Um, also, an engine of note, run up and down all day. Um, he's innocent Mkwango. He, uh, a fantastic footballer, but a stubborn one, probably because he's a Zulu, very stubborn, used to want to th do things his own way. But uh, Chris Mawakapuki from Zambia. Um, so I had fantastic players. And they also got the f opportunity to meet my roommate, Edward Majens Muntali. What a special individual. Played a big part in my career at Orlando Pirates because of uh, the character that he was. So, you know, and then got to meet Willem Mokpara, a Nigerian goalkeeper. So we had fantastic, you know, eventually Gavin Lane, um, so I had fantastic players around me and it, it was a stepping, I could real, I realized my dream of playing for Cosmos, now for Pirates, as I said, a big team, a big supporter team, stepping up to the next level where um, the expectations are high and there you're expected to win things, um, not just to come second or third in the league, you're expected to win the league and win trophies. So it was the next step in my football career, which is something I really had to make and it was, it was exciting times for me. <laughs> I had a really, really, really unique, special relationship with uh, Edward Majens Muntali. Um, not only because how we bonded at, at Orlando Pirates, eventually onto the national team, but we understood each other. I got to understand a little bit more about apartheid and um, what happened in, in football. I came, I played for Arcadia Shepherds, um, which was a club to have one of the first club, white clubs to have a black player play for them. So I never really knew from a playing point of view, playing amongst team, uh, playing football, um, race, uh, apartheid or racism, if you want to call it that, um, where Eddie played for a club just down the road, Berea Park, where there he would sit, sit on the bench for the first team or the under 19 team, and then he wouldn't be allowed into the clubhouse afterwards. So that brought me and Eddie closer from a point of view from being both from Pretoria, uh, we got to understand each other and from Pirates, you know, Eddie was the one who used to then pick me up and take us to training. We'd go in his blue Colt, Galant, I think it was, and we all fit into that um, the Colt and drive to, to Megawatt Park to go train there. Um, and then it was just the stepping stone. He was my roommate uh, during the African Nations Cup for, for 96 for Bafana Bafana. And obviously slowly there, you know, Eddie, Eddie was a little bit older than me. Um, but our relationship was, we were, we were brothers and it was, it was more, our relationship got stronger off the field. You know, me and Eddie used to go, not only used to take me to, to training, but we used to go enjoy life together as well. And we certainly did, we made the most of it. And I look, we looked after each other as brothers would on and off the field. Naomi Lundu, on a number of occasions, has just stood back and allowed the South Africans to, to stay on side. This is a good run here by Bartlett. Into the far post, fish! South Africa lead by two goals to nil. And it's the Italian stallion, Mark Fish, who has the goal of 38 minutes in the first half. My experience with the national team is a vast experience where um, People, 
you know, 94 started playing and then played in the Simba Four Nations. We played in the, the, the inauguration game for, for Madiba. So I was playing midfield. Um, Clive Barker was, I was doing so well at Pirates, he wanted to make space for me at the national team and um, that had a um, knock-on effect where eventually I became, you know, obviously a central defender but my true highlight of my football career, whether I, wherever I played, has to be the 95 winning the African Champions League with Pirates. Reason being is no one gave us a chance. We went to uh, Abidjan with, you know, 2-2 two -two draw at home. Two, two away goals, obviously, for the opposing team is like a victory for them. The, the, the president of the country said, not when, not if they win, when they win. To Tipe. Fish again with a good tackle on the edge of the box. Strong play from Mark Fish. My surname became really catchy to the fans. I think the became, you know, found myself, I suppose at Pirates when it's first started, um, would have probably thought that people were booing me, but they weren't. And then it carried on in the national team and then we well, were fortunate that I could make the difference of the national team where it was Roo, then it was Doctors, 16 Bell, then it was Shoes, and then it was Fish. Um, so it was, I think it was just my surname was very catchy and very easy for people to say. I mean, can you picture that if my surname was Kukumur, would they have gone Kukumur or would they have gone Cookies? I'm not sure. But Fish, I think, you know, I, I was very fortunate. Like I said, I played with fantastic players and I think that gave me the, the opportunity and the ability to go out and play the type of football that I wanted to play. And it was exciting football with the likes of Shoes and, uh, and, and Doctor and the, the stronghold of, of, of the Tinklers and Missingers and uh, the Helm So We just had a fantastic team. So I'm very fortunate that they recognised me. And like I said, I just think it was uh, my surname. It was easy for them to say. Tomorrow. There's Fish with a back header. scouts watching the African Nations Cup and then um, Bobby Charlton was one of them looking for, for Man United. Um, eventually at the end of the tournament uh, the people that were looking after me we made an agreement that we will go to Man United and, and Lazio in Italy. Uh, the two teams that uh, wanted me the, the most if you wanted to say that way. Went over, met with Alex Ferguson, watched them play against Everton um, and then just met with him and he said he would like me to stay for um, two weeks to, to see if I can adjust to the way they play, which is a 4-4-2 formation that they played. Obviously our national team was a more 3-5-2 formation, 4-4-2 is a lot easier. Uh, the people looking after him and representing me just said that uh, we had an obligation to go to, to Lazio as well. And next minute I found myself, so I never said no to Man United, just said we had an obligation to go to Lazio and went there. And next minute I found myself doing an eight-hour medical. The big step up was obviously playing at Pirates, it was still semi-professional then, training three times a week and playing on the weekend. There I was jumping into where I was training twice a day and playing uh, obviously on the weekend. So the major step for me, going to Italian football at the time, 96-97, uh, uh, still Italian football was very strong then. Uh, it was the, the place as a defender for me to go to learn my trade. And uh, so, and uh, if I think of it, <laughs> once again, it's going to seem like a, I love women too much, but once again, I suppose the women, what they look like in Italy is a little bit better than what they look like in the UK, but um, Rome, and um, I found myself playing for Lazio here again in Rome at a penthouse. I mean, I was living the life as a single individual and fortunate to, to start playing with some fantastic names in football in Italy, you know, Signori, Casaraghi, my defensive partner was Nesta, we went on to win uh, the World Cup with Italy. So I learned a lot, although I didn't play as much football as I would have liked to, I learned a lot uh, from the players that I played with. And then the opportunity at the end of the season came to play, to go and play for Bolton Wanderers. Obviously the, the excitement was there getting into the English Premiership and from there I spent the next eight years in England playing for Bolton Wanderers and Charlton Athletic. Bolton have a corner, really 
dramatic beginning here. And a goal from Fish. The drama continues. 2-2. Mark Fish at the moment, jumping all the way from football. I did decide to come back to South Africa in 2006. Um, I've done a little bit of being um, Nestle Milo's brand ambassador to all youth football. Um, so at the moment I'm a little bit out of football, I want to get back in football but um, I am in contract mining which has got absolutely nothing to do with the show but um, I'm looking to get back into football but in the right way um, and so that I can make a difference you know the, the experience that I gain playing overseas I'm looking to give back a little bit more. I do coach on, uh, kids from the age of 4 to 10 uh, for fun on the east side of Pretoria, boys and girls just to teach them to have fun kicking a soccer ball but um, um, I would just say that I'm looking to, to to give back to a little bit more in the football way and I'm just really happy to see some of my ex-teammates, the likes of Eric Tinkler and the Benny McCarthy's um, remaining in the game and doing well in the game. Uh, Benny, I'm excited for Benny to, to for his coaching job at uh, Cape Town City. My experience on Survivor was um, once again a reality show. My, my whole life was, has been a reality show. But I uh, found myself on, a, on an island with strange people and everyone competing, meant to compete as a team, me as a team leader. <clears throat> and um, they still in the competing as individuals for the prize and um, I think that was the, the hardest thing where you try and, you must try and get everyone together not you know as a team sport everyone goes out to win you know the, your right back or your midfielder is not competing against you because everyone wants to win where uh, this competition that's certainly what was happening individuals competing for themselves so they generally ended up voting off the better or stronger players um, but I think what, what made me strong for that was um, the first eight, nine days we, we found it difficult to find food and uh, I went, when we used to travel in Africa with football, we, we stayed in difficult circumstances. It wasn't as easy as uh, if it was on the other side, Konekrika with the rugby. So it was a little bit easier for me to, you know, not having food and being in the situation that we were. So um, I, I would say that um, from an individual point of view, the, the, what I experienced as a footballer traveling to Africa made me strong for, for Survivor and taught me a lot more, taught me a lot about um, how to handle individuals. I think that um, I didn't get involved with the voting of, of teammates off because at the end of the day, if you're going to vote one of your stronger players off, me as a coach, if my best player is injured, I still got to go on and go out and perform uh, as a team. And that's what I took it upon and we, and we generally did. But unfortunately, through them, um, wanting to win the prize as individuals, they voted off the better players, unfortunately the team didn't win. But I gained a lot of experience of, of being stuck on an island, so next time if I'm stuck on an island, I know what I should and shouldn't do. You get out of life what you put into it. If you put nothing into life, you'll get nothing, but if you put hard work and commitment, you'll make it.